All right, guys, let's take a look at our Newton's Law notes. So the first thing we want to do is figure out what is Newton's first law? Well, Newton's first law tells us that an object at rest will stay at rest. It also tells us that when an object is in motion at a constant velocity and it's moving in a straight line, it will continue to move in a straight line until it is acted on by an outside force. So in the top of our PowerPoint here, we can see that we have a picture of a couch potato. Get it? There's a couch and a potato on top of it. <laughs> when we say an object at rest will stay at rest, all we mean is that objects that aren't moving are not just going to suddenly start moving for no reason. There's always a reason why objects are in motion, and that reason is going to be a force. Imagine last weekend when you were just on the couch binge-watching Netflix, and you just kept binge-watching episode after episode after episode. You were just going to keep doing whatever it was that you were doing until one of your parents came in the room and started yelling at you and told you to get up. Objects at rest will stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. That outside force in this scenario was your parent throwing whatever they could find at you. Now let's look at an example where we have a coin resting on top of a card that is on top of a glass. And then we flick that card out from underneath the coin. Since the coin is initially at rest and there's a card holding it up, once we remove that card, the coin still stays at the same spot, it just falls downward because gravity is now pulling it down. What is the force? Well, a force is either a push or a pull on something. And forces can cause objects to change their motion. So the Star Wars picture that I have is actually a good idea of what a force is. If you're familiar with Star Wars, they have the force in Star Wars. And in it, those Jedi are able to pull and push objects with their mind. There's a reason why they call it the Force. Ah! Let's talk about the Law of Inertia. The Law of Inertia is just a fancy way of saying Newton's first law. So what does it tell us? Well, inertia is just the ability to resist a change in motion. And what we mean by that is the more mass an object has, the more inertia it's going to have because we just said inertia is the ability to resist a change in motion. So basically, heavier objects don't want to change their motion. And like we just said, the more mass an object has, the harder it's going to be to speed up, slow down, or change that direction. An example of this can easily be seen if I asked you to try to move your house. Well, your house is pretty massive. If you tried to push your house, it wouldn't go anywhere. But if I asked you to move a soccer ball, if you tried to kick a soccer ball, it would go somewhere. Soccer balls have way less mass. They're a lot easier to move. Now let's think of an example where it's hard or easy to slow something down. Again, if I were to throw a baseball at you, a baseball would be something that would be very easy to catch and slow down in the air. But what if I were to throw a semi-truck at you? If I threw a semi-truck at you, it probably wouldn't be as easy to catch and slow down in the air. And lastly, we have changing direction. If you were driving a motorcycle in a semi-truck and you tried to make a really sharp turn very quickly, it would be a lot harder to make that turn on the semi-truck. The reason being that that semi-truck has so much mass, it's very difficult to change its direction of motion. Think about football, right? In football, we have those running backs. I think that's what they're called. I don't pay attention to football. But in football, those running backs are often kind of smaller guys on the field. The reason being that it's very easy for those smaller, less massive guys to change the direction, to kind of, as they say, juke out the defender. Let's look at an example of objects that are at rest and staying at rest. Well, the prime example that we've all seen time and time again is when you quickly pull a tablecloth out from under the dishes and they just stay in place. This is showing that the dishes have inertia, just meaning that they have mass, and they want to resist a change in motion and continue to stay in place. Here's a quick little GIF that's demonstrating that. We see this guy pull out a tablecloth from underneath these dishes. The dishes were initially at rest, 
and because they have mass, they want to stay at rest. Objects want to continue doing whatever it is they're doing. So he pulls that tablecloth very quickly and the dishes remain at rest, meaning that they stay on the table at almost the exact same spot that they were before. Let's talk about an example where an object in motion stays in motion with a constant velocity. So here's our example. You are driving fast in your car and you see the Joker in front of you. You quickly hit the brakes and your pizza on the passenger seat goes flying forward. The pizza was moving before you hit the brakes because the pizza was in the car and its inertia resisted a change in motion. So it continued to move forward after that car slowed down. This is one of the main reasons why we need to wear our seatbelts. If we don't have a seatbelt on in a car, we are moving at the same speed that that car is moving. And if our car comes to a stop very quickly because we're in an accident, we are going to fly forward at that same speed. Objects in motion want to stay in motion. So make sure you are always wearing your seatbelt. We can see an example of somebody that's not wearing their seatbelt. They're moving at a constant velocity. They hit some barrier and they keep moving at that constant velocity. I don't know if you perform four front flips if this happened, but better safe than sorry. Make sure you got that seatbelt on. The last example we're gonna talk about is for an object in motion that stays in a straight line. Imagine you make a sharp turn in your car you almost feel like you're going to fly outside the window. This is because as the car is turning, your body's inertia or mass wants it to keep moving in a straight line. I'm sure you guys have been on car rides before, right? Where somebody's in the middle or somebody's on the end, or maybe you're on a bus ride and that bus or that car takes a sharp turn and everybody goes sliding to the right of the car or to the right of the bus. The reason being inertia. All of you guys are in motion you're all moving in that direction. When the car turns to the left, your body wants to continue in that straight line, which results in you moving to the side. So let's summarize what we just talked about. So inertia is an object's resistance to change its state of motion. And we said that this happens in three different ways. The first way is that an object at rest will just stay at rest. The second way that we can see this is that an object in motion will stay in motion at that constant velocity. And our last little definition is that an object that is moving in a straight line will stay in a straight line. Some other key takeaways is that the more mass you have, the more inertia you will have. The more massive an object is, meaning the heavier an object, the harder it's going to be to change its state of motion. If an object's at rest and it's a very massive object, it's gonna stay at rest. It's gonna be very difficult for us to start moving that object. And then on the flip side, if an object is moving and it's a very massive object, it's gonna be very difficult to slow that object down. And lastly, when that object is moving, if it's moving in say a straight line, so say that we have like a truck or a wheelbarrow full of weights going down a hill. Well, it's gonna be very hard to stop that wheelbarrow or that truck as it rolls down the hill because it's so massive. The other thing we mentioned in the notes is that a force is either a pull or a push on an object. And those pulls and pushes result in motion. And those types of motion that we're referring to are either speeding objects up, slowing objects down, or keeping objects at a constant velocity. So Thanksgiving is a few weeks away. I recommend that when you have your whole family over and the table's all set up and you have your beautiful tablecloth and all the dishes and all the food on top of it, try to demonstrate Newton's first law. Try to demonstrate the law of inertia and how objects at rest stay at rest. Just kind of go up to that table, grab that tablecloth and really yank it out really quickly to show everybody that you have mastered Newton's first law.